Good afternoon, everybody. It's Matt, a.k.a. the Lumberjack Landlord, back with our good buddy, Mike Zuber from Orange Hill Time. Mike, we got to spend a lot of time together this week with, with uh, Dion gone. Yeah, yeah. Dion, we, we'll miss you. We'll catch up next week. I hope you enjoyed your trip. You're not allowed to do another one. <laughs> yeah, no, what the hell? <laughs> get Wi-Fi, man. Get Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. Get a get a get it get on a better boat. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Mike, super excited to have you here to talk about this topic. I think we spend a lot of time helping landlords. And I think one of the ways that we can help landlords is by having them best set expectation for potential tenants. Mm. I think that tenants need to be doing a lot more research now and better understanding themselves and what they look like to a landlord. So then they just, just don't get to walk around in a huff and all landlords are stupid and that none of us just understand how amazing they are as a tenant. Mm -hmm. Present your case. And so that's where I wanted to kind of for us to kind of talk about it and say, if you were a tenant in today's market, mm -hmm. give me, you know, we'll go back and forth, kind of ping pong back and forth, but give me kind of one of the things that you would be thinking yourself to put mm -hmm. yourself in the best position to get that place and to be able to rent it. Yeah. So this, this means something, right? My sister is a, is a, uh, she does rent. So if I was talking to my sister, Anne is her first name. Uh, a couple of things I would tell her is, is uh, first, Anne, do, do yourself a favor, look for a mom and pop landlord, not yes. a wall street or corporate landlord, right? Yes. I, I believe corporate landlords um, aren't very good. I think they are all about uh, price. They're very, it's, I would never rent from a corporate landlord. Just agreed. Just not happening. So I guess agreed. that's the first thing I would tell her is do yourself a favor and find a mob and pop landlord uh, and pass on any corporate landlord. So that'd be the first thing I'd tell her. Yep. So I think my, the first thing that I would probably tell people is if you think that showing up is going to mean anything, hmm. you could not be more wrong be prepared, be prepared, make the first rule of selling is to remove friction for the buyer to be able to buy you in this case are the seller, not the buyer. Mm -hmm. You're the seller. This is a rent. This is not a renter's market. This is a landlord's market. So you are having to sell the landlord on why you should get the unit over the other 80 inquiries I got in 72 hours, more than one an hour, mm -hmm. even during the night as I slept. Mm -hmm. So the next piece of advice or the first piece of advice I would give is be prepared, yeah. know what you really can afford and read the ad well, understand, read the ad well, the number of things that we have people send over that we just instantly disqualify them over is that you didn't even read the ad. You didn't even read the ad, read the ad, understand the ad and be prepared based on what that ad is telling you to do. And something as simple as understanding what your take net take home is understanding what your actual credit score is just by running it on credit karma. Mm -hmm. understand at least and and be prepared to say oh and i also have proof i paid my landlord the last three months just showing that and here's the transactions it was due on the first it was taken out on the first or it was due on the first and i paid it every single time on the first make the decision easy for the landlord to go they they've got their stuff together this is perfect I, I, th let's do this this is awesome yeah kind of along that lines um I would, I would remind her that all landlords have what I call a tenant box. I don't know if she mm -hmm. would look at it that way, but basically, you know, two, three, four criteria, right? Again, um, your net income to the rent, is it two and a half, three X? What is, what is the landlord? What is the minimum credit um, uh, score mm -hmm. required? Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you are my sister in this case, uh, Anne, um, you know, you may want to get uh, a co-signer or something lined up to make it even a stronger application. Um, you know, if you're right on the borderline for, you know, two and a half or three times, uh, you, you, again, you need to realize that you, the, the, the property you're looking at is scarce. And if you're looking at a house, like she would be, it's even scarcer. Right. And if we go into a market where affordability keeps going down, rental homes like houses are even going to become more scarce. Sure. So you don't, the first thing I would do is, is do the research to make sure I check or she checks the boxes. And if, if the answer is yes, move on. If the answer is no, look somewhere else. Because again, like you said, landlords today have the pick of the litter and there's landlords today in houses 
they don't have to do, you know, two out of three, right? It could be, it has to be three for three or four for four. Yep. You got to hit all the requirements. There's no exceptions today. So yeah, whether it's read the ad, uh, you know, make, get, get a, a co-signer or something, if you have to just try to make it easy. Like you said. Absolutely. If the, the next tip that I would have is in talking with that landlord is understand if you want to, if you really want it, understand, well, what would be the things that would make things easier for you? If I did the lawn, if I signed a two-year lease, again, I'm not trying to get indentured servitude. I'm trying to give you the edge as a tenant to have the best opportunity to win because we have people present this. These are all things that are taken based on a tenant telling me, well, what if I was able to do this? Oh no, I'm not looking for a break in the rent. I'll still pay the full rent, but I'll do your lawn for you. That saves me 40 bucks a week times 12 or 14 weeks a year. Yeah. Saves me 600 bucks and you're willing to do it. And I never am going to get the complaint. Why isn't the lawn done, right? right. Or, or the guy missed a spot. I don't have to worry about that. You're going to take care of it. So look to at least ask questions of the landlord. Say, I really like the place. I think it's fantastic. I see myself being here for years. And what I'd love to do is really, you know, help. And so if there's, is there something here like, doing the lawn or putting flowers outside, something like that, that I might be able to help with. Honestly, every single person that's ever done that for me, we've ignored other stuff because mm -hmm. we're like, they want to be here. They're are going to, they're going to keep the place. Yep. And that made them instantly better qualified as a tenant. Yeah. I guess my last one on this topic is if I was coaching my sister again, I would hope she would eventually get on the property ladder. I would tell her not to stretch. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, I like going first. Uh, you know, this, this is really the time to down, you know, get uncomfortable for a little while, yep. uh, go, get a little bit smaller so you can save money. Uh, because I really do believe as, as early as next year, the powers that be are going to throw a lot of money at first time I home agree. buyers. I agree. And you know what? You might as well get a little scratch put together. Don't stretch. This is not the time to stretch you know, go down. If you need a three bedroom, get a two. If you need a two, get a one. And um, let's not forget that getting on the property ladder, whether it's house hacking, a two or three K loan, oh, something awesome. is at least if I was talking to my sister would hopefully be the goal that she would be striving to. Um, so that's what I, those are the three I'd probably tell her. Yeah. I think the other thing too is, and so, so kind of dovetailing off of that is we have a couple of people that we did multi-year leases with this year. Quite, quite frankly, to get them out of the apartment, it's the same process to evict them if I don't like them anyway. And I think the big key for us and for them is that they've actually set that as a goal. They signed a three-year lease. Mm. They set that a goal and said, we're not going to renew here. We're nice. going to be buying a home. And I was like, I am all, I love it. And so knowing that they have a plan, mm. knowing that they're going to be there for three years, maybe their plan adjusts a year. You never know what's going to happen. But knowing that they have that plan, we love being that landlord before somebody buys a home. I, you know, I will, I will that take that, uh, that notice every day. I'm absolutely ecstatic when that happens. Love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. So Mike, tell everybody where they can find you, my friend. One rental at a time, website, Instagram, YouTube, books. I do a Saturday live stream, which is tomorrow at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific. It Come is. Join, it's there. The it's party. all there. It's a lot of fun. Excited to be there tomorrow. So as I always say, we try and create great content for you. Hit that like button for us. Also subscribe, check us out, hang out with us. Sunday morning, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, I'll be doing my live stream, your questions, my answers. I might not go until it stops, but I'll go for at least a few hours just to uh, hang out with everybody on Sunday and have some real estate talk. So Mike, thanks so much. Appreciate the time. We'll see you in segment number three.